The sun beats down on the Chihuahuan Desert and the air tastes of dust and thirst. You stand beside an old water pump, the kind that pulls from deep below the desert floor. Its handle is snapped, the iron corroded to flakes, brittle from years of neglect. Without water, there is no survival here. But the old man sitting on his porch says water used to flow just fine. You set down your pack. Inside, you've carried what most preppers would laugh at. A plain bar of tin and a bundle of copper bars. Together, they hold the key to making bronze. With a simple mold carved in clay, the fire of a makeshift forge and patience, that broken pump handle can be reborn in a stronger form. Bronze resists rust, holds strength, and will keep the pump turning when iron has failed. In a wasteland where water is life and life depends on machines, a survivor with copper and tin isn't just repairing a pump, he's restoring the future. Hello fellow mutants, Copper Mutant here. Today's topic is the forgotten metal that built empires, and the one you'll want at your side when the world burns down. That metal is tin. Tin is one of humanity's oldest survival metals. Thousands of years ago, when ancient empires first learned to mix copper with tin, they forged bronze. It was the Bronze Age that lifted humanity out of stone and bone. Bronze tools. Bronze weapons, bronze vessels, harder, sharper, and longer lasting than pure copper alone in the Calicolithic Age. And just as quickly, when tin supplies failed, entire civilizations collapsed. No tin meant no bronze. No bronze meant no empire. The process itself is simple in principle. Melt copper, then add tin in controlled amounts to form an alloy. The sweet spot is about 90% copper to 10% tin. Too little tin and the alloy is weak. Little better than raw copper. Too much tin and the metal becomes brittle, snapping under stress. But in that perfect range, usually 8-12% to tin, you get bronze, a material far tougher than either copper or tin on its own. It resists corrosion, takes on an edge, and can be shaped into tools at last. In a post-apocalyptic world, this knowledge is power. A survivor who can melt and cast bronze from scavenged copper wire and pure tin barge can forge blades, hammers, chisels, and parts for machines. A world without factories will still need gears, fasteners, bushings, and fittings. And bronze is a metal that can carry you forward when steel and aluminum supplies run thin, or are difficult to make due to specific requirements. Especially if you, like me, are more comfortable with copper and have a good supply of it. Think about the tools and parts most likely to break down around you. A heavy gate hinge at your shelter could snap under stress. A hand pump might seize when its iron handle corrodes. A generator fan blade, once steel, could rust to powder. In each of these cases, bronze isn't just a substitute, it's an upgrade. Bronze hinges won't seize up the way bare iron does, even in damp air. Bronze bushings can keep an axle or pump handle turning smooth when steel bearings have long since rusted solid. And bronze gears in a salvaged mechanism resist wear without constant oiling, something no survivor can guarantee in the wastes. Iron and steel are strong, but they come with a weakness in the age of collapse. They crave upkeep. They rust quickly, and with a steady supply of oils, paints, and coatings, they rot away. Bronze, on the other hand, forms a natural patina that protects it. It may green and darken, but it doesn't eat itself alive. In ancient ships, bronze fittings outlasted iron and salt air. In old waterworks, bronze valves and couplings kept running long after steel corroded to ruin. That durability is why bronze statues stand intact after centuries outdoors, while iron left in the same conditions crumbles to flakes. Critics will be quick to point out that bronze isn't perfect, and they'd be right. Too much tin in the mix and the metal can turn brittle, as I mentioned before. The solution is in the ratio. 
Keep it close to 10% tin and you'll have an alloy that strikes the balance. Others will point out that bronze is not easily forged by hammer the way steel is. That is true. But the ancients worked around this with molds, clay, sand, or even carved stone impressions. Pour molten bronze into these molds and you can shape hinges, tools, or fittings strong enough to last a lifetime. It doesn't require modern steel mills. Only fire, patience, and knowledge. And yes, sourcing tin is harder than copper. Copper is everywhere, in every ruin, in every tangle of wire, in every length of pipe. Well, unless you're out in the wastes. Tin is rarer. You'll find it in solder, in the plating of old food cans in small amounts, and in pure form, if you had the foresight to stack bars or ingots ahead of time. Scrap can be used in a pinch, but it's often alloyed with other metals that can compromise your results. That's why pure tin bullion bars are so valuable, recognizable, reliable, and ready to mix into bronze without guesswork. So I'd say bars are your best prep. Today, companies still sell one pound tin bars of 99.9% .9 purity. They aren't flashy like gold or silver bullion, but they are far more useful potentially in rebuilding a world. Stack a few of these alongside your copper and you've got the recipe for bronze in your hands. And while you're at it, maybe pick up a little bit of zinc too, but that's for another story. Bronze casting is a survivor's dream. It melts at about 950 degrees Celsius, far lower than steel or iron. You don't need a blast furnace. A clay forge, charcoal, and bellows will do. Molds can be carved from sand, wax, or stone. No hammering. No tempering. Just pour, cool, and clean. As you can imagine, having something that requires less calories for you to form after the apocalypse is also a good thing. Steel forging, that's a different beast. You'll need temperatures above 1370 Celsius, heavy equipment, skilled hands. Iron forging is even tougher. Smelting from ore, refining, shaping, tempering. Cast iron is brittle. Wrought iron is labor-intensive. Bronze wins for accessibility. In a post-apocalyptic workshop, bronze is your early tech tier. It's versatile, repeatable, and strong enough to build with. Iron and steel might come later if you find the infrastructure, but bronze? Bronze is ready now. History offers one last lesson. During shortages, entire nations turned to tin as currency. In Southeast Asia, the Palembang Sultanate cast tin coins called pitis. On the Malay Peninsula, tin was shaped into small animal figures, crocodiles, elephants, goats, traded by weight as money. Even Japan struck tin alloy coins during the desperate years of World War II. Tin has been money before, and it could be again, but its greatest value is as a partner metal. So, as you prepare for a machine-ruled wasteland, don't just stack copper alone. Pair it with tin. Together they make bronze, the alloy that once built empires and might again be the backbone of survival. Tin may not shine like silver or gold, it may not carry the weight of copper on its own, but add it to copper and you create a civilization's backbone. Lose it and you risk sliding back into stone. As the copper skies fade to bronze at sunset, remember this. The forgotten metals of history may be the very ones that build your future. In the age to come, it won't be gold or high-tech steel that you deal in. It will be humbler metals and the quiet ally called tin. That's all I've got for today, fellow mutants. Until next time, keep your wires dry, your circuits tight, and your stash close. It's Copper Mutant, signing out.